Hey YouTube, CJ at Roswell Astronomy out of Roswell, Georgia here. And this video is going to be covering uh, a mini PC connected to your astro imaging rig. I decided to go high tech uh, this winter after some experiences from last winter. If you've ever dealt with dew on your expensive laptop and or uh, dew freezing on your expensive laptop while you're sitting outside all cabled into your mount and your cameras and everything, you might see an advantage of doing this, and this is the reason why I went that route. Uh, so much more comfortable sitting inside, uh, drinking coffee or tea or watching a movie or even sleeping, and you want to check on what's going on outside on your mount, and you can do it uh, over Wi-Fi rather than being uh, wired and connected and running cables all over the place. So it was a great advantage for me to do this. I talked to a bunch of friends of mine that are in the technical fields and computers and stuff and I checked cloudy nights and watched a bunch of YouTube videos and watched some videos off of the Astro Imaging channel and decided that this is the way I wanted to go and I did a lot of research online and I wound up coming across these Codelic AP42s and part of the reasons why I went with this particular one is uh, it had an SSD which is a solid state drive so there's no spinning disk it came with the Intel Apollo Lake Pentium processor, which is not exactly brand new, but it is pretty recent and has plenty of operating power in order to uh, run the computer and run all the programs that are going on in the background. It is uh, dual channel Wi-Fi, which uh, some friends of mine suggested that I get. It also has a uh, thousand megabyte per second ethernet connection which uh, was also important for me because I'll be controlling my Gemini 2 through an Ethernet port rather than doing USB cabling. There are two versions that I found, one for 219, one for 209. My friends had suggested that I get a Windows 10 Pro if I could, and sure enough, they had a Windows 10 Pro, and it was only for 219. So I uh, decided to go with that one. When I looked at now these are 4 gig RAM with 64 gigabytes of memory. And when I looked at my, my images, uh, each of my images are roughly 31 megabytes uh, as they come through. The, after I set up the code licks, I wound up with 19 gigabytes being used for both Windows 10 Pro and all the other programs combined, which leaves me about 45 gigabytes left over. However, I went ahead and elected to go with a... Um, 64 megabyte or excuse me 64 gigabyte SD card which uh, the code licks has one right there that you can install and the only reason behind that was just to make it easy and to collect a, a lot of data and just in case I ever went over I would still have plenty of room but you can pull the SD card out the following morning and then put it into your PC or into your laptop and just download it there or wherever you're you're running your pics and site from um, if you do the math a 31 megabyte file is only 0.031 of a gigabyte. So yeah, technically you would have plenty of room in there, but again, just for convenience, I went also went with an SD card. So we'll I'm going to show you the uh, mini computer here in just a second, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how you can remote into it. Okay, so this is the Codelix AP42 computer. Um, it's not very big at all. This is about four and a half, four and three quarters inches square. It's only uh, about an inch tall. So it, it's plenty small enough in order to mount up onto your rig. It only weighs about eight ounces. So not very heavy at all. Comes with a Wi-Fi antenna uh, for your connectivity and for a little bit of distance. On the front of the unit, you have a blue power light just to show that it's on. There's your SD card port. You have three USB 3.0 connections, two on the side, one here on the back. You have an HDMI out cable connector, you have your ethernet connector, and then you have your headphones and then a hard reset button in the event you ever had to do a hard reset on it. It is 12 volt, so that would be ideal if you're running off of battery power, and that of course is your power button. Again, it is fanless, so this is done by passive cooling, you have some uh, cooling fin, uh, excuse me, cooling openings on the bottom of it, as well as each side. And uh, if you do mount it inside of some sort of an enclosure or something, just make sure you have plenty of airflow to go around it. 
and that'll take care of it. Now, it does not come with the keyboard, it does not come with the mouse, it does not come with the monitor. That's okay. Um, Best Buy, and you could probably find them cheaper elsewhere, but I just got a little mini keyboard, wireless keyboard, with an integrated mouse pad on it. And it comes with a little wireless dongle, little Logitech dongle right there that you can just plug into the side into one of the, the USB ports and then connect an HDMI either to your TV or to a computer screen, whichever one you want. And uh, you just turn it on and it, boom, just goes right in. Uh, it does come with the AC to DC connector, so you can power up in the house. You don't have to be on battery power. It also comes with a little mounting bracket that goes onto the back into those screws right there. So if you wanted to mount it, say, behind a monitor, you could. Not sure how I'm going to connect it yet to the telescope. I may come off of a bar. I may attach it to the leg. I'm not 100% sure. A lot of it's going to depend on cable management. Of course, I also got the SD card uh, just to be able to transfer my files from one computer to the other. And that's a 64 gigabyte. And um, fairly easy to set up. I think the total time to do the Windows updates on it was about 30 minutes. Uh, the original load date on it showed it as being March of this year. So there were a lot of updates that had to be done. This may not work for some people, especially if you're using a lot of 3.0 cables or even 2.0 cables. Uh, it is backwards compatible. Uh, I only needed three. I uh, just needed one for my main imaging camera, one for the guide camera, one for the focuser. And as I said before, I'm actually Etherneting uh, into the Gemini 2 controller. So did, I don't need USB hubs or anything like that. But you could run a hub off of it if you needed to. All right, let me show you how you get into it off of Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're back over to my laptop. You're actually looking at my laptop screen. And this is the computer that I was using for imaging and being connected to my mount. Uh, and it's also where I do all my processing with PixInsight. Um, a lot of memory. I have the big i7 core processors in here. Um, very powerful, great machine. But again, I just I felt like I was abusing it by constantly having it outside and susceptible to dew and to freezing and all that other kind of jazz. Uh, it's very easy to connect into the mini computer. You just turn turn it on, and at that point you can go into several different programs for uh, Wi-Fi remote control. Windows 10 and Windows 10 Pro has their own connection, which is called remote desktop connection. There are others out there like Tight VNC and TeamViewer and a few others. I decided to stick with the Windows versions. Only reason is because it's a Windows talking to a Windows, and it's not third party. You put in the IP address or the name of the computer if you did name your mini computer when you were doing your setup, and then you just simply hit connect. And then now what you're looking at is uh, the actual code licks. We're inside the code licks at this point. All my software is loaded on here. My SGP is on here. All my ASCOM drivers, all the drivers uh, for my guide camera, my main imaging camera, my moonlight focuser. Um, the Gemini is all installed on here. And again, it only took up about 19 gigabytes of space. So it doesn't really use a whole lot. Um, but I, I decided to go with that SD card just to make it easier to transfer files over from one to the other. The screen does minimize, which is nice. So you can be working on your main laptop while you're inside or doing whatever you're doing and still be able to monitor what's going on back over here on the uh, mini computer. Um, and you're not affecting it. You're not doing any performance enhancements because they're operating independently. You're only tied together over the connection. So you're not really hurting it that much. Um, Again, I was very, very impressed on how easy it was to set everything up. Uh, it really did not take that much time at all. It seems to be working fairly well uh, on tests. I did, it was able to get it outside uh, the other night, hook everything up, made sure everything was talking to each other and it was operational. Uh, even downloaded a couple of pictures, but before I could really get anything moving, clouds rolled in. And so that, that put the end to that. Um, but uh, hopefully here within the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll get some clear skies here in Georgia and uh, be able to have good enough seeing in order to, to run a session and see what I can come back with and actually put it through its paces over the evening. Once I do that, I'll post a video just to show you all that, and hopefully by then I'll figure out how I want to mount it on the telescope. 
and uh, put some protection over the mini computer uh, to keep the elements off of it. So be looking for videos here later on. All right. Y'all have a great night. Clear skies.